This video is going to cover Requirement 11B of the Electricity Merit Badge for Scouts BSA. Requirement 11B is to make and run a simple electric motor, uh, not from a kit, so using just things from around the house. And so on the left is an example of what we're going to be building, and I'll just show it to you. It's an electric motor, that very simple one. You can get it started, and it will spin. To build our electric motor, we need just a few things. Most of them you can find around your house. You may have to buy the copper wire, but most everything else hopefully you have. Um, we're going to start with two large safety pins. The important part is that it has a little area that the uh, uh, copper wire can spin in. If you don't have large safety pins, a large paper clip will do, but you'll have to bend it. You're going to need a small magnet, and that will sit on top of the battery. This I just got from the fridge, so any magnet that has two sides on it is preferable. One will attach to the battery, and the other will attach uh, to the electric motor part. You're going to need some copper wire, so any type of copper wire will do as long as it's reasonably thin. This marker is really only so we have something to wrap the copper wire around, so anything that's about the thickness of this marker should do just fine. A battery, either D-cell or C-cell, will work fine. I have a C-cell right here. And lastly is some electric tape. The first thing we're going to do is take copper wire and we're going to spin it into a loop and that will be the top part of the electric motor. I'm going to take copper wire and I'm going to go around what I have here. Remember, you just need something about the thickness of this. Leave about maybe three inches of slack here and then start turning. We're going to turn 10 times. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You're going to leave about 3 inches of slack on the other side, but you want to push these together. Then you have a nice coil that you're going to create. At that point, leave about 3 inches of slack, and we're going to snip it off. Scissors will do. I also have some wire cutters. Take the coil of wire off. And you want to uh, fold in the ends here so that it doesn't come apart on you. Fold it to the same side that the extra came out, and that way the uh, two ends are coming about out of the middle and also opposite from each other. You can see how they are mostly opposite of each other, and then they're going to come out straight. Now that you've got your loop of copper wire, we need to remove some insulation from the sides so it makes good contact with the battery. You can use a few things for this, that's why I didn't put it in the materials list. You can use wire strippers as long as you don't cut too hard. You can just pull the insulation off. Something that works really well is just a small piece of sandpaper. So I'm going to remove the insulation and you'll know that the insulation is gone whenever it starts to get shiny. So we'll fast forward through this part. Now that you've got those ends sanded down, make sure they're nice and shiny. That means it'll make good contact. Take it and lay it next to the battery. And we're gonna cut off enough slack such that it slightly extends over the battery, but not too much. So leave about an inch slack on each side and then cut the wire. The next step is to attach the safety pins, or paper clips if you didn't have safety pins. You're going to put it on the side such that this little loop up at the top is going to hold the wire on both sides. If you're using paper clips, as long as you bend it such that you have that small loop, those will work fine. You're going to attach the safety clips, one on each side, such that it has the loop at the top. To do that, use electrical tape. Whenever you tape the safety pins on, make sure that these two little loops are level. That's very important, so about the same height going up. Next step is to take your magnet and put it on top of the battery. Because the battery itself will attach to a magnet, you should feel it click into place there. Just right on top, about in the middle is fine. Now you're going to take your loop, you're going to stick one end through the small hole on one side and then the other 
on the small hold on the other side. And now you've completed the main idea, but now is the tricky part. You have to get it to spin. In order to get it to spin, you have to position it just right, sometimes give it a little start. You can see that it's mostly spinning all the time for me, but it's having some trouble. This can happen if it's not quite in the right place, left or right. Also, if you're having trouble with it, make sure that the uh, sides of this have been sanded down to where you can see that insulation off. Also, make sure that it's uh, in the middle on both sides of the wire. You can see how if I had it too much at the top, it wouldn't be evenly hitting the magnet. So, you might have to play with it for a little while, but if it goes right, you will see it spin. So the way that this is working is that on the sides, we're getting electricity to this copper wire with the coil in it. That creates a magnetic field because it's a coil of copper wire. That magnetic field acts against this magnet right here that we have on top of the battery. If you get those to where they're right on top of each other, they constantly push and pull each other such that it goes around and around. This is the basic idea for almost every motor.